I think I was about 10 or 11 when I first heard of the American South and its complicated history. I was presented with Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. And frankly, I don't know if I understood a great deal about it back then. But I remember feeling a great deal of affection towards the characters. With time and school and asking questions, I got the big picture of the situation. But I was living in such a faraway place from that, both physically and mentally, that it almost seemed just a terrible story. Fast forward about two decades later, I got a hold of Sue Monk Kidd's best-selling novel, The Secret Life of Bees. And suddenly, between my new perspective and her personal view of the South, I discovered something completely different. Join me in 1964, South Carolina. After losing her mother at a young age, Lily runs away from her father and discovers a different kind of family in the Boltright sisters' home. Beekeepers and worshippers of a black Madonna, three remarkable women that manage to live with grace in a world that does not welcome them. In the beginning, sad and revolted. But as I turn the pages, I am transformed by the kindness and strength of August Boltright. So by the time I finish the last page, I am reconnected with a sense of hope. Number one, generalization is an unjust, tricky business. It would have been terribly wrong to refuse shelter to young Lily only because she was white, representing the oppressor in the eyes of the Boatwright sisters. Personal experience has taught us that no two people are identical. History has taught us that by treating a community based on race, religion, or sexual orientation in bulk, we are committing irreparable injustices for individuals. Sue Monk Kidd's novel reminds us that humanity is the only generalization possible. Other than that, we are individuals and must be treated as such. Number two, learning the lessons of our history. Until recently, I thought this to be a truism. Something so basic, it needn't be reminded. Yet, news headlines in the past few years have shown how little we remember of our mistakes, how quickly we change our views given the right incentive, and how vulnerable we are to manipulation. So let's get back to facts and teach our children how to think for themselves. Was that the right thing to do? Would you have done the same? How would you like it if it was done to you? 
simple, basic questions that make us reflect. Number three, kindness. Passing through life, we cannot avoid getting hurt, even when living privileged, sheltered lives. The biggest risk and the most often mistake is to respond in the same manner. That way, it is not only the vibration of one person that is low, but also that of all the others he hurts when they choose to make their tormentor hurt back. So choose kindness. Choose to walk away from the people or situations that make you suffer and find others deserving of your kindness and light. It is the only way to chase away the darkness. The strong figure of August Boatwright is a key element for my perception of the novel. Like many older siblings, she assumes the mother figure for her younger sisters, but in this case, without crushing their own personality. She offers the setting of stability in a violently segregated world. It is as if in the Boatwright household, there was no racism or struggles. And by opening her home to a young white girl, clearly in need of finding her balance, August proves once again that her strength comes from giving, that her joy only gets bigger by spreading it around. A story of mothers and daughters, of feminine force and questioning, a novel to give you hope when it feels like nothing can make things better, a yin novel if ever there was one. I am neither a black woman, nor a young girl in need of a mother, nor living in the 60s. And yet, the book speaks to me today as if it was written especially for me. I guess that's what you call universal truth. And if I had to choose one life lesson from it, true independence seems to be it. There are two phrases in the conversations that August and Lily have that are not only essential for any woman, but quite visionary for the time. When talking about a man she used to see, I loved him enough, she said. I just love my freedom more. And when discussing the absence of her mother, you have to find a mother inside yourself. We all do. The idea that you can share life experiences, but no one person, not a mother nor a husband, should be indispensable in order to find joy, is a life lesson I find empowering.
Nobody around here had ever seen a lady beekeeper till her. She liked to tell everybody that women made the best beekeepers, because they have a special ability built into them to love creatures that stink. It comes from years of loving children and husbands. If a white woman chooses to write the story of a white girl that finds mother figures in four black women that bestow their love and blessings as if their skin were just the same, then maybe we can all see each other as humans, no matter the color of our shells. So read The Secret Life of Bees in order to regain some confidence in our humanity. It's been a pleasure to speak to you about a novel I cherish for many reasons, but mostly for opening my eyes to something far away, yet that affects me just like the butterfly effect. In the next episode, we'll get connected to the nurturing and joyful energy of August Boatwright as we enjoy some special rituals inspired by the book. Until then, enjoy your reading.